Well, Ireland got its retaliation in early by noticing much earlier than the other desert countries that it was in a mess and starting to turn the wheel round. Ireland has put into effect a kind of internal devaluation because it's managed to adjust prices and costs, wages, uh, much better than the other problem-hit countries have done. This has, of course, been very painful, but the Irish people have also taken this sacrifice on the chin in an exemplary way. You don't see the Irish people descending onto the streets and burning effigies of Chancellor Merkel. And I think all this shows that the Irish people are doing the right thing. However, they're only halfway through. That's the bad news. And probably interest rates are going to have to go up and there'll be more foreclosures, more tough measures to have to take. The budget has to be decided as well. So there's still a way to go. But I think the Irish, if they carry on like this, they will get back the confidence and they will be returning to the bond markets. And it can be like first into the real problems and the austerity, but also first out. And unlike the other problem hit peripheral countries, Ireland does have a working business model for exports. Well, you see, the problem is the EMU was built only for success. There isn't any mechanism to cope with failure or setback. And also the politicians and the technocrats are just not uh, inured today with the ability to get their minds around these problems. But there's just one or two things. For instance, the euro will not decline on the foreign exchange markets and therefore the countries which have become lacking in competitiveness will not be able to become competitive again through devaluation. Also, the creditor countries are not in a mood to forego large sums of money to the debtor countries through debt relief. They're also not in a position to simply lend more money uh, after they've already done so much in the way of guarantees. They also don't want to relax the interest rates. What would be most sensible, particularly for Greece and Portugal and Spain, would be simply to provide grants, but th they don't want to do that. And I think above all, uh, there's now this gulf between the creditors and the debtors. There's resentment on both sides. The creditors who feel they're not getting enough uh, generosity, if you like, and uh, not enough gratitude on the part of the debtor countries. People don't say thank you enough. They're worried about that. Also, they're worried about not getting their money back. And then the debtors, an equal amount of resentment, but for different reasons. They think that the conditions which are being applied to all these loans are just intolerable. And many people, as you know, in Greece and in Spain and Portugal are just beginning, becoming increasingly fed up with all this. I don't think the Irish are in that category. But it's this psychological gulf between the haves and the have-nots, the people who are owing the money and the people who owed the money, that is probably the most negative part of what we're seeing today.